Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, Harlow is in the background making lots of noise, so that is what you'll be hearing for the whole video. Um, so, today I'm going to tell my labor and delivery story. Um, I guess, I mean, it's not like anything crazy. I didn't, luckily I didn't have to have like emergency C-section or anything crazy. Just had a regular VBAC and it was good but I am already starting to kind of forget a lot of like little details that happened so I want to make this before I forget everything so I can go back and watch it and remember everything um but also if anyone's interested about it um so let's get into it okay so Basically, since the beginning of my pregnancy, I knew that I was going to have to be induced, well, not really have to, but I had the option to be induced at 39 weeks because um, I had a blood clotting mutation and I also had group B strep, so which means during my whole labor and delivery, I have to be on um, my video cut out. But, um, so yeah, my whole labor and delivery I had to be on antibiotics and um so I always had the option to get induced at 39 weeks which was always my plan because I'm one of those people I like to plan everything I like to know when everything's gonna happen I didn't want a spontaneous labor and be like at work or somewhere and be like oh my water broke or something like that I didn't want that experience I wanted it to be planned I wanted a date a time when I could just go and give birth <laughs> um, and I know a lot of people don't want it that way everybody has their own um, ways they like to do things especially when it comes to labor and delivery um, but that's just how I wanted to do it but surprisingly enough so I went in for one of my appointments and I was it was my 38 week appointment and it was on a Friday and I went in and they measure, you know, your amniotic fluid levels and mine happened to be at like 25 um, of however they measure and usually they like it to be around 19 and so for some reason I'm not really sure why just due to the fact that I had high amniotic fluid levels um, I had the opportunity to be induced sooner than 39 weeks um, meaning like 38 weeks and so um I was talking to my doctor about it. she's like let me just call the hospital and see like maybe next week like next Friday like a week from today you can get induced or whatever and I was like okay so I went home and she called me a couple hours later and this keep in mind was like a Friday at like five o'clock and she was like Okay, so I talked to the hospital. They don't have any openings later on in the week, but you're going to go in on Monday at 8 p.m. and get induced. And I was like, like what? Like in like three days I'm going to be induced? Like what? It was crazy. And um, I was really excited, but I was like, holy cow, like I was not expecting this. Um, luckily I had everything ready to go. I already had her car seat in the car for months. Like, I mean, she was born in the end of February. I had it in the car since December. <laughs> um, cause I'm just kind of like crazy like that. Um, and so luckily we had everything ready to go. And so I'm going to have to, um, hold her for the rest of this video probably just cause she is in that kind of mood. She looks like a little grandpa right now. Um, but yeah, anyways, so I was so surprised that I was going to have to be induced, like, three days from then. Um, so, basically, Monday comes around, we had a plan that me and my boyfriend, her dad, um, and both of our families were going to go to dinner before, um, near the hospital, and have, like, a dinner where they basically send us off. To go have our baby and so we did that it was really fun and then we go and check into the hospital at like eight o'clock um and so they brought me in a room and the rooms are really nice at the hospital we did a hospital tour before just like you know to make sure i had already seen the hospital when my mom gave birth there but um they'd renovated it and the room was really nice 
for the um, like the delivery room because you go to multiple different ones. I luckily didn't have to go to triage because I had a induction scheduled. So, um, so we go in there and since my body wasn't, you know, in active labor on its own. Um, so starting at 8 p.m., they basically insert a pill into you and it helps soften your cervix um, so that you can start you know like dilating and getting effaced um, to have your baby so they put that pill every two hours throughout the night up there and in the morning my cervix was like a little bit softened but not not a lot um, but I was having contractions and I was already mm, like two centimeters dilated when I went into the hospital but I'd been sitting at that for a couple weeks so um, in the morning so when you get induced they give you a drug called Pitocin and um, it is a basically a fake version of the hormone that your body automatically makes called oxytocin I think um, and so they sometimes usually will give it to you um, while you're in labor but always when you get induced they give it to you because it helps your body go into labor it starts contractions it starts all the fun things of labor um, but they were going to give it to me but I my body after my cervix had softened started contracting on its own so I started having contractions at like I don't know I'd say like mm, 8 in the morning and they did let me eat breakfast, which I thought was surprising because everyone was like, eat a huge meal before you go to the hospital because they won't let you eat until you have the baby. And for me, that wasn't the case. They let me eat breakfast. Um, and so since I started contracting and I was basically in active labor, like the early stages of it, um, they started me on the penicillin antibiotics for my group B strep. And... Um, if you don't know a lot of these terms, I apologize. I don't want to explain every single thing because this video would be 10 years long, but if you are curious about anything, just Google it. Um, but so they started me on antibiotics and then um, my contractions, they were hurting a little bit, but um, they were kind of going slow. So then they started a little bit of the Pitocin and um, then my contractions were going too close together and for really long periods of times like they'd be like over a minute long and they'd be like really close together like every 30 seconds so um they had to keep shutting off the pitocin turning it down so eventually around 10 a.m i was like okay i want my epidural because i was starting to feel the contractions and they were happening so frequently that i was just like you know, I want to enjoy this process. I knew the whole time that I was going to get an epidural just because, for me, why feel the pain if you don't have to? Um, so I was like, I want the epidural, and she was like, okay, like, I'm going to go get the anesthesiologist. He'll probably be here in, like, 30 minutes. So I was like, okay, because um, I just didn't want to sit there. I had to keep breathing through my contractions. It just wasn't fun for me. I didn't want to do that. Um, I just wanted to enjoy the whole labor experience, so... The anesthesiologist came in and then he did the epidural. They make everybody leave except um, one person and I chose her dad to stay in there. And they make him sit down just so they don't like pass out or something. We have a spit up. What are you doing crazy girl? Um. So yeah, they made her dad be in there, or they didn't make him, but I made her dad be in there. Um, and they make him sit down, and they did the epidural, and I was, <laughs> I was so scared for that. I thought it would hurt so bad, because it's like a needle going into your spine. But um, it didn't hurt at all. I didn't even really feel it. Um, it just felt like pressure, kind of. And then once I got that, um, I stopped feeling my contractions for a little while. Um, and so then we just kind of were waiting they would start to turn up the pitocin but they keep having to like turn it back down because my contractions would get too strong and too close together and meanwhile i'm not feeling them so the nurses are just looking at the charts to see like what's going on with my contractions 
and every time that they would start the Pitocin, like, turn it up to what it's supposed to be at, um, her heart rate would start dropping, hers, and, um, because the contractions were getting too strong, since I was already contracting on my own as well, so they, um, they had to keep turning it down because they don't want the baby to get stressed, and, um, so it was like that for a few hours, every, like, couple hours they'd check me, and I would dial it a little bit, but not very much, um, and then I'd say when I was at about a six, um, which it was like probably four in the afternoon. I don't really know time because I was like not on my phone because, um, so the epidural worked for my contractions, but I started feeling insane amounts of pressure, um, down there and like on my butt <laughs> and that's all I could feel. I couldn't feel the contractions, but I just felt like so much pressure and come to find out it was her like pushing down, but they kept checking me and they were like, no, you're like only at six. And they kept putting this big um, peanut shaped ball in between my legs and making me turn on my side because it's supposed to help um, make it a little bit more bearable. And I was like, no, like this is hurting really bad. So then flash forward to like almost six o'clock, um, the nurse checked me and she's like, no, you're only at an eight. And I was like, I feel like I need to like push. like. I could barely talk and like explain was how I was feeling because I just was in so uncomfortable and I don't know what I'd call it pain but just the pressure that I felt was so uncomfortable and I was so out of it I was so tired because I didn't sleep well the night before because I kept getting woken up to get that pill inserted and I just like I kept feeling like I needed to push and I felt all that pressure and I was like she needs to like come out like I just and they're like no you're an eight you can't start pushing and then her heart rate started dropping a lot. And so all the nurses, there was probably like six nurses in there, they flooded in from the nursing station and were like looking at it because they can see the heart rate and monitors in the nursing station. And I didn't really know what was going on, but everybody was kind of like, everyone else knew what was going on. And I just kind of was like, what is happening? Um, and my doctor... I don't know how where she was she just came out of nowhere and she got there and then she checked me and she's like uh who like when's the last time someone checked her and they were like just like five minutes ago she's only at eight and then she's like no she's at a 10 like we need to start pushing like now because the pressure I was feeling was her like my body trying to naturally push her out because but obviously I wouldn't know because I had the epidural and I kept pressing my epidural button so many times because I thought that it would help you know with the pain of all the pressure I was feeling, but it doesn't. Um, but they were gonna send in an anesthesiologist again to do another one because I just was in so much pain. Um, and I kept lock, the epidural has a lock on it so you can't overdose and I kept locking myself out because I kept pushing the button because I was in so much pain. Or feeling so uncomfortable, I'd say. Um, and so when my doctor came in and she was like, oh, we need to like push. Um, so her and my nurse that was on duty, which also aside from all this, all my nurses that I had in the labor room, oh my gosh, they were the best. They were like, a couple of them were so funny. They made me feel really comfortable. Um, I didn't feel judged at all because I am 19, but they made me all feel really comfortable and they weren't judgmental at all. Um, and also I had kind of like a funny so everyone was in the room for like my whole labor so my mom my dad my grandma um my boyfriend and my best friend were all in the room um and i wasn't gonna have everyone in there when i was pushing but i was so uncomfortable and just so out of it to the point where i didn't even care i was like whatever like anyone can stay don't care um so then we started pushing around like six o'clock um and we pushed for about, um, like, 50 minutes, because she was born at 6.49 p.m., um, so we pushed for, like, that whole 49 minutes, and, um, the pushing part, I'd say it wasn't very hard, but then when I had, like, my boyfriend holding one leg, the nurse holding the other, and then they were like, okay, so now you're going to hold your own legs and push. And I was like, what the heck? Because I couldn't feel my legs. Like, I was grabbing them. I couldn't feel them because of the epidural. And I was just like, how am I supposed to hold my legs up? Like, I can't even move my lower body. Like, it was so hard for me. But um, 
I did it and then I was pushing and um, then I was only pushing, I mean 49 minutes is not that long to push in some people's cases. Some people push for like three hours, but for some reason she was like so low and she wasn't coming out. So they were like, okay, like you really need to push on this like last couple ones or otherwise you're gonna need like a C-section. You need to push. So I was like pushing as hard as I could and um, the doctor was like, okay, like I'm gonna have to give you an episiotomy. So she cut me twice. Um, luckily I didn't feel that. Um, like she cut me and then her dad looked at me and was like, like did she feel that and I didn't feel anything I didn't even know that she actually did the episiotomy until after when she was stitching me up but then I'll pop this one and she was perfect and healthy and then they were stitching me up and I was like watching her do all the stitches and pulling the thread and like I couldn't feel any of it thank god um so I am happy I had the epidural for that case I guess it just didn't work for the pressure that I felt um but Overall, I'd say my labor and delivery was pretty easy. It was eight hours total, um, not counting like when I went in and they were putting the pill in, but from the time that I was in active labor to the time I delivered, um, with pushing and everything, it was like eight hours, and that's really not that bad, especially for being the first, my first baby. And um, so yeah, I think it was actually a really good experience for me. Um, the recovery and even the labor and delivery itself was not as bad as um, as you think it would be, I guess. I was so scared for that my whole pregnancy. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to give birth. I don't think I can do it. Um, I've had my tonsils out, and that recovery was so much worse and so much more painful than giving birth and doing that whole thing. And... Um, so honestly, I was really blessed because I had a really easy, happy, fun pregnancy. I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved it. Um, and then my labor and delivery was fairly easy too. Um, so I think I got really lucky. So, which is, I guess a good thing, but also a bad thing because now um, I could totally do it all over again, even right now, but I won't. <laughs> um, but she came out being seven pounds eight ounces and 21 and a half inches long and for a baby that is pretty long especially for a girl and now she's in the 90th percentile for height so she is a tall girl i don't know where she gets it from because i'm only 5'4 and her dad is like 5'11 so i think she's gonna be my tall little supermodel <laughs> um but yeah so that was my labor and delivery story i mean it is really scary giving birth when you're only 19, um, let alone I'm sure any age, but it's scary and you always are having that fear that you're going to be judged by nurses and doctors, but honestly they were amazing, um, except <laughs> I had a couple nurses that weren't the best, but they weren't judgy, it's just, um, my delivery and labor nurses were amazing. But after you give birth, they let you like sit there for a minute, they clean you up everything. About an hour later, they move you to recovery. And the recovery room was definitely not as nice. It was so small. There was a chair for her dad to sleep on for the next couple nights. And also, we had, um, we just didn't have like the best nurses. They just kind of were like, they kind of, um, my video cut out again, but I, yeah, again, I feel like, um, once you give birth, um, they kind of just don't care about you as much, the nurses, and they're not as, like, tending to your needs, I guess, which I guess makes sense because you're not carrying the baby anymore. The baby is the number one priority, of course, but also I feel like the moms you just went through so much, they should be a little bit more sympathetic towards you, but, you know, overall, it was a great experience, and we got to go home two days later. Um, and I could go on and on about more details, but um, my baby is not very happy right now. So I am going to go, but I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching me blab on about stuff that is probably not that important to you guys, but it's very important to me because it's the story of this little one's birth. Um, but if you would like to see more videos about me and my baby and maybe some more with her being in them, then um, like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.
Bye, guys. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. She's dead. All right. Bye, guys.